Hello, everyone from all over the world, and welcome to this Thursday night happening. And tonight we're going to feature um, really a tribute to the music and genius of John Coltrane, who was my jazz hero. Uh, apologize for we had a little technical difficulty, with, which is why we started a little late. But we're here now and uh, live streaming to you all over the world from us to you. So uh, I'd like to uh, also thank everybody who's given so generously over the, the past, I think this is the eighth show we've done, I can't remember, but in all of those shows that we've done, we have raised enough money for almost 10,000 meals for the Greater Chicago Food Depository, which is really amazing. I never imagined that so many people would donate money for this and uh, believe me the food depository is also extremely grateful because these are very very tough times and they're not getting any easier right now so john coltrane he's like picasso he went through so many different periods in a very short amount of time uh, if you listen to his music from his earliest recordings to his last recordings it almost sounds like a different person uh, his sound changed, his musical contexts uh, evolved, and uh, he got increasingly interested in, uh, in the spiritual dimension. And he was always, a, he was an amazing musical theoretician and mathematician, but he also had the most soulful sound on the tenor saxophone that anyone probably ever had, and no one ever sounded like him before. His sound was like out of nowhere that he came along playing like that. So just, I could talk forever about him, but I don't think you're here to hear me talk. So I'd like to start out with a tune that I'll talk a little bit about after I play it. And it's called Wise One. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that was Wise One from a beautiful, beautiful album that was the first Coltrane album that I ever heard. Just due to blind luck, I uh, asked somebody, what's a good jazz album to listen to? And this person said, you should listen to this album here, Crescent by John Coltrane. I went, okay, and he gave me the album. It was a librarian at a library, and they used to have these turntables, you know? So I took the album over to the turntable and put the headphones on, and the first tune that came on was Crescent, and I just sat there with my jaw hanging. I had never heard anything like that before. All four musicians in the quartet, uh, McCoy Tyner on on piano and Jimmy Garrison on the bass and Elvin Jones on drums and of course Coltrane. Uh, they all blew my mind and it, it was like the first day of the rest of my life, you know. So I was on a kind of a quest to figure out what the heck they were doing and also I was deeply moved emotionally by the music in a way that I never had been moved by music before and I'd been playing music for almost 10 years at that point and improvising and, you know, Loved all different kinds of stuff, uh, but this, I could tell that I was in the presence of something different and something, the combination of advanced music and spiritual depth that just uh, just blew my mind to use a cliche. So, um, you know, I love all the songs on this album. Uh, and matter of fact, I recorded Wise One on my own, my first, the first album that I ever made which is called Harmonica Jazz. Uh, it took a lot, of, uh, a lot of nerve to play a Coltrane tune on harmonica, and that was with the uh, late Bob Gustafson on piano and the very unlate and still currently very active Eric Hochberg on bass and Paul Wertico on drums. And uh, I remember recording these two Coltrane tunes. Uh, uh, we did Wise One and Resolution from A Love Supreme, and it was like a different spirit uh, overcame us in the studio doing the, these tunes from from the feeling that we had playing the other music. So anyway, uh, it's a uh, it's heavy, and a lot of people don't play Coltrane's tunes precisely because it seemed like he owned them, you know. Uh, but I love them as pieces of music, and I I love to play them, and uh, hope that you enjoy what you're hearing. Now. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, at, the, at the end of this album, there's this very bright blues. And it's kind of like whew, a little palate cleanser uh, called Bessie's Blues. It's supposedly named after Bessie Smith. And like everything else Coltrane wrote, there's unique things about this tune. And uh, one of them is it's an E-flat. And there aren't that many jazz blues in E-flat for, for whatever reason. And so uh, I'm going to play it on my A-flat harmonica and the keyboard at the same time. And... Uh, Hope you enjoy it. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tennessee's Blues, and Jimmy Garrison ended it with that A natural, that flat fifth of, of E flat. That was the first time I heard that thing happen, and uh, that also made a big impression on me. So, uh, once again, uh, you know, I started to uh, explore Coltrane's uh, lots of other Coltrane albums as a result of hearing Crescent and and literally wearing out the grooves on the record on my turntable. Uh, and one of them uh, that I found was this extremely beautiful album because he was a very, uh, very complex musician and he could play the most far out, adventuresome, like 12 tone things that just defied your ears to figure out what they were. And then he could also play a ballad more beautifully than anyone ever did or anyone ever has before or since. And, uh, you know, they said that, that Coltrane was a man of few words. Uh, he didn't grant that many interviews to people. But if you listen to his playing, he was talking through his horn. And he knew all the lyrics of every song he ever played, and he sang them. And this is one of the most beautiful ones that he ever sang through his tenor saxophone. And it's called You Don't Know What Love Is and from the Ballads album. And th this is a, only the other day that I find out after listening to this song for years that it was originally written, believe it or not, for an Abbott and Costello movie. And they dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we don't want that song in there. And of course it became this hugely popular in the jazz world. Uh, people sang it and played it. Uh, Dakota Staten had an amazing recording of it, uh, singing it. So, uh, once again, this is one of my favorite um, tracks from uh, the Ballads album, uh, You Don't Know What Love Is. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much. I know some of you out there are actually listening to what I'm playing. It's a uh, little bit of a strange new, brave new world that we're in here where we can't play to audiences and feel the vibes. And I can't play with my fellow musicians. And so I'm just trying to create a musical environment uh, that hopefully uh, is a uh, lives up to uh, lives up to the music. Um, I'm trying my best, so I uh, hope you are digging it. And if you really dig it, I hope you can donate some greens to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Yeah, I guess people really need food right now. There's so many people out of work, like musicians. <laughs> many of my friends, I, I mean, just have have n nothing. I mean, people are are in really dire straits, not to mention people who are already poor and needy. So um, please find it in your hearts. You know, John Coltrane was somebody who was extremely conscious of social things. He didn't speak out verbally a lot about it, but he wrote some tunes about some of the problems in society. A matter of fact, Bakai, the title track from his first album, refers to the lynching of Emmett Till in a kind of an indirect way. And he also wrote a, a very sad and tragic tune called Alabama in memory of these uh, a bunch of little black girls who were killed when some sick person bombed a church in, in, I believe it was in Birmingham, Alabama. So he spoke out and felt everything very deeply and just tried to spread positive energy into the world through his music. And uh, it's one of the many reasons I'm paying tribute to him tonight. And so uh, I think at this point I'd like to read some of the comments that people have sent in and uh, say hello to people. And Jim McLaughlin, of course, in Maryland, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope, uh, I hope you, you ended up uh, finding, finding it. <laughs> hey, Buzz. Buzz Krantz. Yes, sir. Rory Ridley. Oh, thank you. Ah, enjoying the intro music. Yeah. That was the Harmonica Jazz album. And uh, Seth and, oh, my friend Dwight. Oh, thank you very much. Ah, Lewis in East Tennessee. Here's to you, Dan. Uh-huh. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. And people from China. And uh, our Eric Landry, thanks very much. Uh, Judy Israel. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's on two instruments. I, I really wish I had a band I could really let loose. Oh, thank you, Dan. Oh, thank you, Roberta. Uh, thank you. Uh, Greg in Charlottesville, yes. And Norman, my old friend, Norman Savitt, who actually his, his album is on uh, Balkan Samba Records. You can check it out. It's Norman Savitt and Friends. Uh, Sonia, once more, thank you so much. And Mark uh, from Seattle, uh, thank you. And Rochelle, once more, oh, thanks for the applause. Yes, and Luke, Luke Anthony. Uh, oh, thank you, Tony. Yeah, uh, Matthias Russell, Russell. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was struggling a little to try to keep the two instruments together at some of those, some points there. Hey, Solitaire Miles, a wonderful singer who I've recorded with. Hey, Solitaire. And, uh, Ray Boyer, ah, my next door neighbor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, hey, Sandy. Uh, Sandy Wong Ronkowski. Oh, T.S. Henry Webb. Yeah, live, long live Lincoln Avenue. Oh, my cousin Andy from Philadelphia. Yeah, Coltrane's adopted hometown. Thank you so much, Andrew. Yes. Oh, Troy, Troy Nyhart. Oh, don't throw your harmonicas away. Well, it's easier than throwing away your piano. They're much easier to throw off a balcony. You know, in the early days when I was starting to play and I couldn't play very well, somebody came up behind me and took the harmonica right out of my hands and threw it out the window and said, hey, Levy, why don't you stick to the piano? And so uh, I was like freaked out. It was my first harmonica. I spent $2.25 on it. I ran out of the school door and went down to the sidewalk and rescued it. And it wasn't damaged too badly. And I continued to play. <laughs> hey, Eric. And Megumi from Japan, thank you. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad this is, you know, making some of you 
feel good, you know. Uh, thank you, Charles. Uh, yes, the notes on the pieces and the composers, that's, that's my, uh, my producer. She does all of this stuff. Ah, oh, Christian Inostrosa uh, from Chile. Ah, wonderful harmonica player. Uh, Tony Schmecka, old, old uh, Evanstonian here. Uh, Jim Cottingham. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Uh, thanks so much. Out in Iowa. And uh, uh, from Quebec, Bernard. Paul Asbill, fantastic guitarist. Uh, thank you. Say hi to Celia for me, please. Uh, Shelley, thank you very much. Uh, Gordon from Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the bass harmonica. Oh, Stephanie, my daughter in Australia. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, and uh, the bass harmonica. Yeah. Those are, those are, uh, yes. And I almost forgot because I'm concentrating so hard on Coltrane's music that I forgot that I put out an album. And the, the coincidence is that the album that I put out, the, the official release date just so happened to be Coltrane's birthday, which is why we're doing the show on Coltrane. It's like, it just was a confluence. These things came together. And this one is called Looking Inward. And it's a very contemplative and meditative and exploratory album of solo piano. And there's no harmonica on it. I have never recorded an album that didn't have any harmonica on it. So uh, this is really different. There are a few cuts where I did levyland.com. Yes, uh, there's a little misprint on, on there that the auto spell turns it into Leyland. Uh, but it's available at my website, levyland.com. And uh, I'm very, very proud of it, but the reason it happened really was I got really sick in the beginning of March. I haven't really shared this uh, with people uh, widely. I, I kept it to a, a narrow few, but uh, I got the virus, and uh, I was really, really sick. Nobody ever tested me, but I had all the symptoms. We, it was so early, they didn't have enough tests. And uh, I didn't have the cough. That was the main thing. They said, sorry, we can't test you. But I had all the rest of it. I lost my sense of taste and smell. And I had a fever for 10 days or two weeks. The horrible sweats at the end. We had to sh change the sheets about three times a day. Uh, I lost about 15 pounds, something like that. And uh, there were more things. <laughs> it was more. I was in a mental haze. I couldn't think. I couldn't tell the difference between a major and a minor chord. I was having nightmares. Uh, you know, when I listen to people's accounts of it, they're all very, very similar of the, the mental fog that you go through. So when I got back from, you know, f f actually able to sit at the piano and play and put some thoughts together and actually, you know, have some coherent ideas, I started recording a bunch of piano stuff and uh, it gradually turned into these pieces. Uh, I played for many hours and I picked the best hour of them. Uh, and it has a really nice flow to it. Um, I was inspired by thinking about scenarios in my mind rather than me playing, uh, like trying to express myself. I was following stories in my head and, play, and imagining I was in other places and it just came out the way it came out. Uh, and I think that it can bring you some peace to listen to this. I really honestly do feel that way. Uh, and so I'm very proud of it. And going to uh, get back to playing music of Coltrane now. And uh, there's something very special from the book that I put out, which is called Songs, Poems, and Stories. This is one of the poems. And I always imagined that I would sing it, but it ended up being more of a poem to a 12-bar blues. Because the blues is like, is at the, the heart and core of jazz. And I found a Coltrane blues that seems to go really beautifully with this poem. It's a piece of his called Equinox. Uh, Coltrane really liked looking at the stars, and Crescent was actually inspired by the shape of the crescent moon. Uh, 
There's a, there's a fantastic book about Coltrane written by C.O. Simpkins, who I hope is tuned in tonight. Uh, and it talked a lot about the Coltrane's inspirations from, uh, you know, the inspirations for his music. It's a, it's a really wonderful book. Uh, unlike any other book written about Coltrane, it captures his spirit. The author felt the spirit of Coltrane and his writing reflects it. And I would recommend it to any and all of you who are interested in Coltrane the man and the musician. So this is my poetic tribute to Coltrane to the form of Equinox, which is from an album called Coltrane Sound. Uh, when he was first accelerating into that next sphere, right around the time of Giant Steps and before he was on Impulse Records, this was on Atlantic. you played in your time here on earth. We're lucky you stayed here so long, blessing us with your genius and song. Trained by breathing, your tenor became like a candle that's lit by a flame. So 
showing us what was true. to your vision when critics wrote words of derision outside of their small-minded scope you brought music of love and of hope uplifting our lives and showing the way to a far better day inspired with a sound that never grew tired you could well in the farthest out songs Or whisper the tenderest tones Space and time were your friends Paths without ends Rolled out of the bell of your horn Your devoted disciples were born Train. Even your simplest pieces are like doctoral theses. We study them each time we play. We hope we have something to say, because you said it all, but we still try to answer the call. Thank you very much. <sighs> this is putting me through a lot of changes playing all this music. <laughs> if I were playing for an audience, it would be as well. So uh, the one thing that I would like to mention about this poem is that it is in my book, Songs, Poems, and Stories. And I am currently recording an audiobook version of the book, uh, which is going to include reading the stories, to music uh, and the poems to music and also the songs I'm going to actually sing. Um, there's about eight of them. So uh, it's an act of bravery for me to commit my voice to the permanent recorded media, but what the heck, man. You know, especially in these times, we just never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So I have to make sure to try to put as much of the stuff that is important to me out into the world, whether five people listen to it or 500 or 5,000, there's no way of predicting or knowing, but I just feel like I have to get it out there and try to spread my stuff, you know, to the world and try to be a positive, uh, be a positive force musically, you know. Uh, it's all I can do right now, you know. So, uh, the last tune I'm going to play is uh, one of Coltrane's best known pieces. <laughs>
giant steps. I wasn't going to play it on harmonica. I'm going to play it on piano. Just erase that. Um, because I did a recording of it with Trio Globo on an album called Steering by the Stars. Um, I had been just praying that I could record it the way that I wanted to, which was to play it in a whole bunch of different time meters and different rhythmic feels. Uh, and uh, Eugene Friesen on cello and Glenn Velez on percussion are the perfect cohorts to play like this with. Uh, they can play basically anything and can read anything. So tonight I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to include some of those elements, but some other ones as well. So wish me luck.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that was uh, Giant Steps in 4-4 four, four and 5-4, which was 10-8, and then 7-8, uh, a little bit in 9-8, and finishing up in 11-8, uh, uh, which are all rhythms that I enjoy, and I uh, hope you enjoyed some of it too. And uh, if you like that, yeah, you might want to check out that cut on the uh, Trio Globo Steering by the Stars album because I actually play a lot of that stuff there. But um, I think it's I think it's time to <laughs> I think it's time to end. I'm just getting warmed up though. I'd like to I'd like a few more cracks at some of those tunes that I played earlier. I think I could actually play them a little bit better right now. But thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we uh, we really. I, my director is telling me I'm supposed to look at this camera. So we really appreciate your tuning in tonight. And uh, I appreciate the fact that, that you are an audience and also that you're generous in your donations to this fantastic, unfortunately necessary cause of, of uh, providing food for people who can't afford to buy it. Um, so... I feel kind of happy and a little bit grim about the world all at the same time. And I invite you to uh, visit the website, levyland.com, and check out everything that's available there. There's a lot of notated music. Matter of fact, I am working on notating three of the tracks on Looking Inward, and those will be up in the next week, uh, as well as many other tracks that I've, been, uh, that I've played over the last eight weeks on this show. And next week, I'm going to honor my other, my other greatest musical hero. I'll do the best I can uh, playing the music of Bach, uh, sometimes just as it is and sometimes with a whole different look at it uh, because Bach was one of the greatest musicians, composers, and people who ever lived. So, Thanks, thanks again, and uh, bye-bye till next time. Thanks.